Hello, Therese. How are you? Welcome to another episode of Shining the Light On. Episode 18, in fact. Woo, woo. Love episode 18. I'm good. And it's a beautiful sunny day and a perfect day for our topic. <laughs> Sunscreen. Sunscreen. Oh, Yay. my gosh. <laughs> I remember growing up and we go um, like to Mexico or somewhere really warm, like sometimes in the spring. And of course, living in a small town in um, Northern Alberta, Canada, where you get minus, you know, 15 to 30 degree weather through most of the winter time. Um, let's just say we weren't really getting out and getting much of a tan. So when we go to Mexico, we would take all of our sunscreen, like our 40, 50 SPF and just like slather ourselves in it. Right. <laughs> and same with the summer. Cause you you're told, Oh, wear sunblock and then you won't get a burn and you won't get sun cancer. And of course, here we are fast forward to now realizing that yes, of course we don't want to get burnt. And we're going to talk about that because we're not going extreme either way, but mm. that now of course everything is inverted and we're finding out that no, it's not the sun that causes the cancer. It's the sunscreen and all the chemicals that we're putting on our skin, right? Like boom, right. we're just going right in. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like I, I get it too. I'm a Washington state native. So mm -hmm. we spend, it feels like a majority of our year in clouds, at least, yeah. <laughs> you know, like we always have, we have what's called sun breaks in Washington state, which some people are like, what's that? And that's where yeah. it's like, the sun might show up for a little while at some point today and then it'll be clouds again. But right now, uh, so summertime's a big deal because you get a lot of the sunshine and, you know, growing up, I don't remember sunscreen being a huge part of, like of going out. I think maybe for me personally, because it, I tan easily. So it wasn't really something that it was like, oh my gosh, make sure you put on sunscreen. Mm -hmm. But my son who has the same skin type as my husband, very like a very Britishy sun, sun um, skin type. He gets very affected by the sun. He burns like a little lobster, you know? So as a parent, then I was like very conscientious of, of protecting him and his skin right. um, in the sun. So yeah. as I started like thinking about it. And this is what something for me, this topic wasn't something I did a lot of research on. It was more intuition meditation stuff. And it, it, again, I want to reiterate that my process in getting cleaner and healthier in the things I eat and the products I use has been a very long, slow process where mm -hmm. it's like, you take a little, you make a little change here and when that change is set, then comes forward. And it's been a very, like, again, intuitive process. But yeah, after I cleared a significant amount of toxic stuff out of my system, then I started getting messages about the sun, which I want to share today. But I, my, yes. my take on the sun is very different now and how I look at it than it was even like a couple of years ago. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Me too. Because we were all conditioned that the sun is dangerous. Right. right. The sun is bad. You get too much sun. It's going to cause all kinds of issues with your skin and aging and cancer and blotch it like just so much stuff, right? The fear mongering is just so heavily pushed. And of course, as we know now, whatever the, the mainstream is he heavily promoting and pushing as bad is usually is the opposite. Right. And, yeah. And can I add, I feel like there's also a lot of stigma around it. Like don't push back on this. Mm -hmm. It's one of those topics where it's like, there is a natural knee jerk reaction. I feel like don't talk, it, don't, don't just try to debunk this or don't talk against right. it because that's stupid. It's like, what do you want to die of cancer? Like, why wouldn't you yeah. cover yourself in sunscreen? Right. Yeah. That's a very good point. It is. It's almost like it's a non-negotiable, right. Um, because you're putting yourself at risk otherwise. And as a contrarian, that naturally gets my attention. And I'm like, mm, if, there, if I'm being told I have to do it, then the natural contrarian part of me starts pulling back mm -hmm. and resisting and going, I don't know. Now I don't want to so much, right? When it when you're not allowed to question it, that's when I my natural like spidey senses are like, now I'm going to start questioning it. 150 bazillion percent. I totally mm -hmm. agree with you. It just those spidey senses really start to kick in, especially now over the last three years. Right. So, you know, I think it's so important that what we need to understand is if makeup 
if the lotion, if the shampoo and conditioner, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and everything in your skincare and body care routine is full of chemicals, why would the sunscreen be any different? Right. And, and we know that there are chemicals in the stereotypical sunscreens. We're going to look at those a little later, but there Mm -hmm. are ingredients in them that people know is not good for us, which is why alternatives are already appearing, right? We've already got mainstream, like for example, uh, sun bum is one of the alternative sunscreens that's available. It's one I feel more comfortable with uh, than a traditional one. Um, And what I there's so many points to this topic. There's a lot to this. And again, I love what Amber said earlier that we're not taking any like really polarizing stance no. because there's no um, going to one extreme or the other. In this case, we both leads to unhealthy outcomes. Yeah. Instead, there is like the happy middle uh, when it comes to this topic. So which extreme should we start with? What do you want to look at first? Um, should we start with, do you want to start with ingredients in the sunscreen or, or, or were you thinking of doing that afterward? Yeah, no, we can go into the ingredients in the sunscreen. So the, then that, then we're starting with sort of the, the polar, um, and where you are dousing yourself in sunscreen, you are afraid. This is the extreme, uh, one of the extreme ends. You're too afraid to go outside without any kind of sun protection. Yeah. Right. And this is a negative, uh, pull because this is inhibiting some really important stuff that your body gets from the sun. So I think, yeah, maybe we could start with that first. Okay. Perfect. Um, so Let me why just... don't you start? What, what are some I mean, there's one big thing, one huge thing that I think everybody knows we get from the sun, which is vitamin D. We have vitamin D. And now that being said, what we want to be aware of is you're not going to get all your vitamin D from the sun. Obviously, the more of a sunny place you live in where there's a lot of sun all year round, you're able to spend a lot of time outside, like Florida versus where I live, you're going to absorb (laughs) a lot more vitamin D year round here. Right. Of course, from like May through September, there's a lot of good time to get out into the sun and get a lot of vitamin D. However, we can also get snow off and on and start to get cooler weather right from October through to April. Sometimes it can be nice. However, if it's going to be, you know, really cold in the blizzard, like I'm not going to be going out and I'm not going to be able to get my vitamin D. So I think this is where honestly, I, I suggest everyone supplement with vitamin D because there's so many deficiencies and a couple thousand IU a day won't hurt you. And it'll really make sure those levels stay good. But yes, we get so much good vitamin D from the sun. And that is really important for our hormone health, our mood, our nervous system. And vitamin D is a hormone like substance. It almost mimics a hormone. And when we have deficient levels of this, I see a lot of women with skin issues, low moods, irregular cycles, yeah. other hormone imbalances. It's interesting because sometimes I have clients who have some anxiety and depression when we start working together and their vitamin D is so deficient and we get them on vitamin D and they're like, Oh my gosh, my mood is better already. Why? And I'm like, yeah, because vitamin D and mood are so connected. And the sun, oh, right? that's why we always feel so much better when we're out in the sun. Absolutely. In fact, in the state of Washington, we're sort of known for being a state that has a lot of seasonal affective disorder because right. of the high amount of cloud cover we get. So even in um, some of the warmer months like April or May, mm-hmm. um, we're getting a lot of cloud cover. Cloud cover really starts kicking in in October. And of course, I love the clouds. Like I love that moody atmospheric energy, but you're right. It's like your vitamin D levels are in certain areas of um, whatever country you're in are probably already dropping already. Yeah, totally. And this, and I, I totally absolutely agree with the supplementation. I know that when I started consistently supplementing with vitamin D, um, I had much higher immunity. Like yeah, I could go all year too. without getting a cold. Oh my gosh. Hi. One of the best things you can do if you start to feel run down is take high doses of vitamin D, like 10,000 IU a day for like a week or two until you feel back to normal. It is so good for boosting the immune system. Absolutely. So what, so why are we talking about vitamin D when we're talking about too much sunscreen? One of the things that happens when you are 
coating yourself in sunscreen before you even go outside is you're literally blocking the vitamin D absorption. So there are certain types of radiation that the sun is giving off. You, you know, we, we think when we think sunscreen, we think we're blocking uh, UV rays, which are supposed to be the skin damaging uh, energy right. or rays that we experience, but we're also blocking um, certain radiation rays from like, um, gosh, is it UVA and UVB? Mm -hmm. So those rays, and th that's where the, I think it's the UVB is what's allowing us to produce vitamin D in the body. Mm -hmm. um, and that also gets blocked. And so we, so you could be out in the sun, you could be out in the sun all day, but if you're coated in the sunscreen, you are not getting any of that healthy energy. Um, and you're also not, your body is not able to regulate and tell you mm -hmm. the proper time to move out of the sun. So right. in the happy middle, what happens is that your, your natural receptors, which are in your eyes and in your skin will automatically let you know when you've had enough sun and it'll, your instinct will be to move into shade or move inside. Like you just do it naturally. It's just like, you know, okay, this is enough without having to think about it. Mm -hmm. Um, so when we're dowsing ourselves in sunscreen, whether it's healthy sunscreen or not, we are not getting those signals and we're not getting that vitamin D production. Yeah. Yeah. So again, there's this happy medium, like we were talking about earlier in early in the summer, right. We, we will get outside, but we will not, if it's a really hot intensive Sunday, we will not go out for the whole day and just be out there. Cause we don't want to get burnt really bad. Cause I don't think that's good for anybody either. And right. my hubby has really fair skin cause he's a ginger. So it's like even more so for him. Yes. Um, so we'll start like easing our way out and spending like an hour or two at a time so that we don't burn and we don't wear sunscreen, but if we go on a vacation or go somewhere where it's really warm and again, we're, you know, still not really have much of a tan, we will get a natural sunscreen and wear it for those days while we're there to just prevent getting a bad burden. Cause the one year we didn't, we burned so bad and we're in <laughs> so much pain for a few days and your skin feels so tight. And then you're peeling and you're like, never again. Right. Right. So it's like everything in moderation, but we, we try to use the cleanest sunscreen that we can find. And we try to like build up mindfully so that we're not, we're not slathering ourselves in it all the time. So that's so, our kind of approach. I think that's a really smart approach. And not only that, so, so we talked about what we're not getting, we're not getting the natural signals. We're not getting the right. vitamin D, but you're about to show us now what we are taking in on a negative level. If we are, if we are just coating ourselves in sunscreen all the time. So what is yeah. this that you're showing yeah. us? So copper tone is a very popular brand for adults right. and kids. I, it's funny because I was thinking about their logo the other day and it's like a kid, a topless kid with like the dog pulling the underwear down. And I'm kind of like, that's kind of creepy, isn't it? When you think about yeah. the logo. <laughs> Anyways, hold our conversation. Yeah. But um, Copper Tone is a very popular brand. When you go to every grocery store, it's like front and center right now. It's one of the first things you see. And so we go to our favorite website, ewg.org, right? And we're looking at sunscreen. Um, and so it gets a five out of 10. So it's pretty, not very good. Okay. So health concerns are rated as a high. So we're in the red with health concerns. We're in the yellow. So pretty moderate with UVA, UVB balance. Um, but anyway, so number one, to me, like red flag sunscreen can break down while still in the bottle. Okay. And be, yeah. be sure to dispose of it safely, like red flag. Cause it sounds like, you know, hazardous, um, materials. hazardous materials. Exactly. Um, this contains chemical active ingredients that the FDA does not have enough health and safety data to is classify as safe and effective. Um, and there is four ingredients say, right there. <laughs> can I just say, how does the FDA not know now? Oh, how, they know. How long has sunscreen been on the market? I know, but I mean, like, <laughs> That it's like, oh, we haven't figured it out yet. I'm like, it's been 50 freaking years. I know. You haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. I think you know. They definitely know as we know. Um, and they're just like, here, everyone, slather yourself in poison, wink, wink. Mm. But these four ingredients here, um, that's four ingredients that they don't have well, that they know probably are really hazardous to people's health. Oh, wait, go back because I have information on one of those. So oh. um 
Yeah. The last one that you see there, the octocrylene, I believe that's okay. What was octocrylene? Octocrylene. Um, hmm. I know down there's one, further there's, there's, I think everything. Does it tell you? I'm going to just see if there's anything here on our little, um, oh, here we go. Octocrylene, right? Mm -hmm. well, so allergy and immunotoxicity. There you go. Um, accumulation, exotoxicity, irritation, skin, eyes, lungs, biochemical or cellular level changes. Hi. And that's one that a lot of people, I guess that's one of the ingredients that's definitely removed from the healthier sunscreens that that's one mm -hmm. of the one taken out. Do they talk about, um, benzophenone? Let me see. Ben here. Um, just look at all these red flag ingredients that you can't pronounce. That's one of right? the ways, you know, this one doesn't, I don't, doesn't look like it has it, but it has all this other stuff in it. Another, the, one of the most dangerous ones to look for, and this is information that comes from a uh, neurobiology professor, Dr. Andrew Huberman, uh, is triclosans. So triclosans are a compound that can actually cross the blood brain barrier. That means that whatever that ingredient is and whatever it can do to you, it's literally can go into your neurons. Mm -hmm. uh, and affect you on that level. That's how dangerous um, that is. So triclosians is one of them. Yeah, no good. And if we look at a few of these other ingredients, like obviously here we can see all these ingredients. And like I'm always saying to clients or whomever, if something ends in like the TYL or the XYLs, um, and it's just a lot of things that it's hard to pronounce or just sounds mm -hmm. like it's made in a lab. Like you're guaranteed these things. Like this is one of the most horrible ingredient lists I've ever seen for a skincare product. Right. So number one, it has fragrance, which is, know, our, yep. That one is talked about. highly toxic and yes, unregulated. Exactly. So we don't know, that could be up oh. to 3000 different chemicals to make the fragrance in copper tone. We just don't know. Exactly. Which is just a huge red flag first off the bat. And then we see that there's a lot of these ingredients that use restrictions and affects the biochemical or cellular cellular level changes are elevated. Like butylical, what is that? Butylical salicate. Something. So here we are being told to use sunscreen to prevent cancer. And this sunscreen literally could give you cancer. It's yeah. the it's possible with some of its ingredients. Yeah. And then a lot of these are endocrine disruptor ingredients, which also the more messed up your hormones, the higher your estrogen that could contribute to estrogen dominating cancers. We have another SD alcohol, 40 B cancer low, right? Reproductive yeah. toxicity, right? And even if it's low, it doesn't matter. There should be no risk. We should not have all these products that have such a high risk. So as a mom, here's the scary part. Um, parents are constantly being sold that we need to sunscreen up our kids. It's like, yeah. it's one of the basics, like as a, a new parent, you're like putting this mm. all over your little baby. Like I remember mm -hmm. spraying it on my babies, like getting it all over them before letting them be outside. Yeah. Um, and so here's an example of what do we got? Banana boat, banana boat, mineral and rinse mineral sunscreen and rinse. spray SPF 50. Okay. So let's look at, okay. Octocrylene again. Mm -hmm. That's There's what like I think that's one of the hormone disruptor, I think. Yeah. And we're in the moderate for risk. The ingredient label is just like a jaw dropper, like all again, pure chemicals. Um, look at this. We've got allergy immunotoxicity, six out of 10, moderate, use restrictions, moderate non-reproductive organ system toxicity, moderate, right? Like yeah. irritation, contamination concerns. One of the things that the, the doctors are talking about who are talking out against the use of these kinds of sunscreens is the fact that there are hormone disruptors in these products mm -hmm. and it has more of an impact on a developing child than on the adult. The adult will still get those negative endocrine disruptor, but for the 
prepubescent child, Mm -hmm. it's messing with those hormones before they even really start developing. And it, the, the thing about these um, chemicals, these nanochemicals is that they're staying lodged in the tissues. They're not Mm -hmm. being flushed out. Yeah. Yep. It's just building in the body. And then if you think about not only putting a sunscreen on your child, but you know, their shampoo, the conditioner they're using, maybe they're like wanting, they're using a lotion, right? Right. Maybe totally. they're wanting to play with mommy's makeup. If it's a girl, like it just, there's so much that they're being exposed to. That is just so many chemicals. And so, yeah, well, it's innocent. You think you should just slather your baby in sunscreen. And he- here I am as like a parent looking at this and I'm thinking, oh, mineral enriched, this is going to be better for my child. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things about the, first of all, dermatologists are like, don't mix chemical sunscreen with physical and a physical sunscreen is what um, they would refer to as the mineral sunscreen. So like zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. So one of the things we know that they say about that is if you mix the chemical and the physical, they, they cross each other out. So Mm -hmm. how is it that they're marketing this product as a mineral enriched sunscreen? Basically what they're telling you with this product is that it, it doesn't have the effectiveness that it's supposed to have because technically it's cross canceling its effectiveness out. Right. Number yeah. one, number two, the mineral sunscreens, even though they're derived from nature, the titanium dioxide and the zinc oxide are a form of heavy metal, you know, that, that we're using. And that's not to say that I'm, again, I feel like there's a moderation in it mm-hmm. and it's probably a healthier, it's definitely healthier of the two, Um, but you'll notice that I was saying this to Amber before we started, um, like zinc oxide or titanium dioxide does not spread easily. It's almost like nature is like, don't use a lot Mm -hmm. or use it in small areas. It's almost like a patch thing, you know, like how you used to see people put it on their nose, totally uh, protect it from the sun. Yeah. And speaking of contamination concerns, right. It's saying right here, I think in essence, like avobenzone is the active ingredient, but like probably shouldn't mix it with all these other ingredients, right? So it's just going to show you that there could be risk if you're mixing sunscreens, or maybe you've put some kind of a lotion on that has these ingredients, and then you put your sunscreen on and it could give you a rash or a burn in itself or some kind of negative reaction, right? right? And we're not taught how to review those cross contaminations. And if it could be a risk, and then people are ending up with all kinds of skin issues, going to the dermatologist, getting their prescription and nothing is getting clear. So you just never know, right? Like this is, you're literally doing a science experiment with your skin and these ingredients. Right. And the, the thing that they're learning too, is that, like I said before, they're, they're micro particles, they're getting lodged, they're being absorbed, right? Mm -hmm. They're being absorbed into the body immediately and they're staying in the tissue. They're staying in your fat cells Yeah, hanging out. So those chemicals are And, you know, our body uses those fat stores for energy and stuff. So when it's lodged in your fat cells and then your body releases the fat cell to be used as energy, those chemicals also get re-released, you know, into the body. Yeah, exactly. So so it's like, and I heard someone say who seemed to be more like, I don't want to say anti-sunscreen, but they were like, I don't use sunscreen. And the point they made, which I was like, point taken is like, here I am spraying myself down with chemicals. And then I'm baking in the sun and they're mm-hmm. baking these chemicals into my body. Yeah. And I was like, fair point. You know, that's, that yeah. is technically what's happening. So yeah. before we, be, before we talk about that middle ground, let's talk about the extreme, the other extreme. Now let's be like, oh my gosh, never using sunscreen again. Yeah. This stuff is, is poisonous. So I'm just going to let myself you know, it's nature, it's the sun. I'm supposed Mm -hmm. to be in this, Mm -hmm. um, all day. Why is that not a great choice? Well, I, I don't think that like burning excessively is good for us either. Like the time where we got burnt because we forgot sunscreen, like the inflammation that I felt the heat, the redness, it's all inflammation, right? There's this reaction, your body going, this isn't right. Your, your, your skin should not boil to, you know, having blisters and then be peeling three or four layers of your skin. If you, your skin smells like it's burning, that is not like, that is not good for any part of you, right? You're, you're, you're suppressing your immune system. And that's why some people get sick when they, after they get a bad burn, 
they feel really run down is because their, yeah. their immune system is literally having to fight so hard to deal with this burn and this huge inflammatory response that's going on that it just suppresses the system. Well, that makes sense. And also there is something to the, like the overaging effect. I think um, the, my yes. team is saying it does something to the water barrier layer in your skin. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that's a legitimate, a legitimate medical response, but it's something I would look up about that. There's something happening to the water barrier mm-hmm. layer when you overexpose yourself to the sun. And that's why, you know, you will see people who are like prematurely aging or they look a lot wrinklier yeah. or their skin becomes uneven and that there's an elasticity that your skin loses yeah. Yeah. Uh, from the overexposure. So it, inflammation, inflammation really contributes to that early aging for men, balding a lot. I know people say it's hereditary. A lot of it is inflammation. The more inflammation we have in the body, the quicker we age, the quicker men will go bald. So there is that, I think there's a huge inflammatory component to getting too much sun and, and how that well, impacts. And it is radiation. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't want to say like, cause I'm not scared of the sun. I no, love the sun. I mean, you look at, it keeps things alive. Sun yeah. is a life force energy without the sun. Even if we had an artificial sun, we would not be the same beings. We would be very mm-hmm. sick um, because we need that energy and there's more than just a physical energy. There's a spiritual energy coming through it. Yeah. And I, I want to talk about that when we talk about the middle, because there's actually prime times for the spiritual energy that comes through the sun. Um, so I'm not scared of the sun, but there is, your body has a natural instinctive response to the sun. Yeah. And, um, it, you'll notice if you are, let's say you're on vacation and you're enjoying it. The first thing you want to do, ah, I want to get out in the sun. I want to lay down. And then your body will start to tell you this is getting uncomfortable and you will move. You will Mm -hmm. want to get into a pool or you'll want to get into the shade or you're like, I'm done. Let's go inside. Yeah. You naturally know when it, when you've topped off, you know what I mean? And my team says that with the sun, the healthiest way to think about it is like, it's banking energy. You, you need it. You want, it's like charging you literally. Mm -hmm. Um, So you want to get a little, as much as you can every day without being excessive, because just like if you were to charge your phone, there's a point at which your phone is charged and it doesn't matter how long you keep that thing plugged into the wall. It is not charging it anymore. And the sun and humans work in a similar way is what I'm getting. Totally. Yeah. And that makes so much sense. I'm excited for you to dive into those, the benefits spiritually and energetically, So I think maybe what I can just share briefly is if you're going to use a sunscreen, try and find one that is as clean as possible. So like I was sharing earlier, essentially you want to look for something that has, you know, maybe five or six ingredients max. So the sunscreen that we use has vitamin E, um, it has jojoba oil, beeswax. It does have some flower oil, but I mean, we're literally using such a small amount. And in this regard, because we're not ingesting it into the, it just feels different, right? I know it's absorbing into the body, but I feel like it's going to be a bit of a different process. And then it does have zinc oxide, uncoated clear zinc oxide, but below the threshold of it being a serious issue, being a nanoparticle issue. And again, we're literally using it maybe a couple of times through the summer. Um, and there is a, another alternative to sunscreen that acts as a sunscreen and that's clothing. That's, mm-hmm. you know, hats, umbrellas, yeah, totally. to, you know, co- a coat, putting it on. I mean, these things are generally uncomfortable, but they work as a natural sunblock and there's not, you're not putting any chemicals uh, on the body when you use it. So, you know, I mean, I, I still feel like, first of all, like I said, I have a, a fair skinned child So am I going to let him be unexposed? Absolutely not. Like when he goes in the pool, he wears a swim shirt because Mm -hmm. in the pool, you, you know, the light reflects off of the water. And Mm -hmm. so you actually get more sun faster. Um, And he got a bad burn and he had sunscreen on. And so he needs a a physical layer of protection. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I haven't found something that has uh, the least amount of ingredients like Amber has, but the, the brands I tend to uh, favor are like, like I said, Sunbum is one that's pretty widely available and it's, it's 
fairly clean. It's free of all the big toxins. Um, and I just, I use it sparingly. I'm not like constantly yeah. reapplying it. And the strategy is more like, here's some time in the sun. Now let's go back inside or let's mm -hmm. get in the shade. Um, and, and that's just teaching him to work with his instincts about it yeah. is I feel like a better way forward than just relying on something else to do that work for him. Now yeah. he's like, aware and conscious. And, you know, he had that negative experience with this sunburn. So now he's like more conscientious and aware, yeah. um, but not afraid, which I think is really important. Right. Totally. I agree. I think, and everyone's going to navigate, right. What, they, what feels best. And I think it's just like, you're starting to look at your ingredient labels and, and getting the less toxic ones and the, the shirts and things like these are the, the great alternatives. So absolutely. Do you want to talk a little bit about this, the benefits of the sun, and then we'll go into the questions. Yeah. So one of the benefits of the sun is that we are getting um, so much upgrade energy through the sun. And what I mean by that is our consciousness is upgrading. The energy does come through our sun, which is a major um, portal for higher vibrational energy to come through. It's why in you know our ancient history they worshiped the sun because they recognized that there was a connection between the sun's energy uh and spiritual like awakening spiritual knowledge was coming through it so there is a connection to that and uh, um for people who are are fair skinned or they just they don't want to be in like the hot direct exposure sun the good news is that that's not even the most potent spiritual energy times to receive mm. these downloads, the, the most potent times are at dawn and at sunset. So when the sun is not, has not reached its peak or full potency, where you can actually engage with the sun for a longer period of time and have less of the effects of the sun um, hitting you. And it's, by the way, we know this instinctively, we feel yes. really good. Yeah. Engaging with the sun at these times. Like I'm a big sunset person. That's just kind of yeah. my sweet spot. So it's like, I love going for walks at sunset. I love looking at the sunset. You just can feel mm -hmm. that there's something coming in there. Um, that's really powerful. Same thing with Dawn again, so much energy coming in and there are people who actually have spiritual practices where they engage with the sun at dawn and at dusk or they meditate at dawn and dusk because these times are very potent mm -hmm. with the spiritual downloads and upgrades that are coming through. Yeah. It's so interesting. You mentioned that because I've been feeling so called to be out in the sun when it's like six or 7 PM and like watering the flowers and being yeah. out then. And it just, and here's the instinct, the intuition of just the natural attraction to it, because this is the best time to get those downloads. So cool. absolutely. And there are levels of engaging with it. I think that, you know, you know what you need, mm -hmm. but like what the first level would just be outside with it. Like I said, go for a walk, water your plants, stand out mm -hmm. in, this, in sun and just enjoy the colors in the sky. Um, if you want to up it, meditate at those times, mm -hmm. go outside and meditate, sit in a chair, close your eyes, do some deep breathing and just allow, just ask for whatever upgrades or downloads are coming through. And then if you want to go advanced and I have, I haven't personally gone this way yet, so I can't speak a lot to it, but it, there's the sun eating technique, which is a more advanced technique where you are engaging with the sun at very specific times. So I would look it up. I would refer to people who are masters at it or know how to do it because there is a, a peak moment to do it. Um, to sun gaze or to eat the sun <laughs> is what it's called, right? Like if it's coming into your third eye and you're okay. looking at it, but again, that requires research and understanding. Right. And there really is an optimal time where, first of all, the length of time you do it is important. And also when, like when exactly to do it, where the sun will be giving you the most benefit without creating any harm mm -hmm. in the body. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Thank you for sharing those. Those are really great. Absolutely. Let's all get out and meditate in the sun a few times before Absolutely. the sun flies. Yeah. Um, so let's, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say this year, this year, more than any other year. I mean, I, I naturally have been doing it where I'm like, I have to go outside. I need to be in. And for me, it's 
the direct sunlight is fine. Like I said, I like, I'm okay with it. I only do like 15 minutes max, but I've noticed that I've been guided by my team to go outside and get the, I need the on my face specifically is the face for some reason. And I think it has to do Mm -hmm. uh, with a third eye, but I'm being asked to go meditate outside and get that dose of sun. And then I can do whatever I want to do, but specifically major downloads are coming in right now. Awesome. So get out in the sun. Yeah. Get get out there and get some. Um, Okay. Let's get into questions. I am curious, are the nanoparticles in the sunscreen? We're talking like the copper tone, all these big box brands, right? Are they building up in the body or are they being easily eliminated? Cause we know some of it's, you know, building up in the tissues and stuff, but I just am curious about that. Okay. Let's find out. Oh, <laughs> interesting. So the card that comes up says interference on it. <laughs> and so this is the eight of swords. So it's having a mental component. Yeah. I think they're kind of talking about with this one, the uh, neurotoxin or the mm-hmm. crossing of the blood brain barrier. Okay. I think maybe there's more ingredients than we know, or whatever triglycosans are, that's the name of the type, but it's not telling you the ingredient name, if that makes sense. Right. Um, well, so we were asking like, is it in the body? The first thing they want to let us know is there is a restrictive energy happening. It's, a, it's restricting in your mind. So it's creating a, like a mental constriction uh, whatever these ingredients are. So again, I think, and as I'm asking my team, they're saying it's because the screen itself is blocking the sun. That is, I just Mm -hmm. had stated that is a consciousness expanding mechanism, right? So it's creating a mental restriction, but the question you had was how long, uh, are these ingredients staying in the body? Are they being quickly eliminated? So I want that answer. Let's see if we can get that i just think that's interesting they wanted to really point out that it's a mental restrictor yeah Ooh, it makes sense go. so and two eights so interesting so now we've got the eight of cups in the reverse position um I think what they want a lot is, so this is a position where usually this is a positive card. So I get the feeling that um, it does, we've heard doctors say it does stay, but I think it gets flushed out faster than other things. Like for example, when I ask okay. the team, the seed oils stay in the skin and we haven't even talked about that part, but the seed oils stay in the skin longer than the chemicals. So the chemicals are breaking down quicker, but the seed okay. oils like canola, sunflower, safflower, all that, yeah. um, soybean, those things are lodging in our tissues and they're dense. They don't move so quickly where these are. I mean, the good thing is they are nanoparticles, which yeah, it means you get a lot and they go deep, but they don't yeah. have, they don't have the quite the staying power uh like your fats i'm getting that it can flush quicker that's good that's good that's what we want one of the things we've learned about seed oils um like the canola and the sun the sunflower and uh soybean oil is that these are actually increasing our ability to burn in the sun yeah so having those having a diet that has a lot of of those seed oils in it. And then those oils stay lodged in your tissue and those oils are actually increasing your ability to burn in the sun. So now you're thinking, Oh, I burn easily. And then you want sunscreen because you want to protect yourself. It's a natural response. But the the thing is we are artificially burning Yeah. without those in our system. You know, how long would your sun be able, your skin be able to tolerate sun exposure? We don't know until we eliminate that. No. Um, yeah, well, but the bigger, bigger issue isn't how long it's in your system, but the fact that it's blocking your ability to expand consciousness. Yeah. 
Totally makes sense. Just like with everything else. And so second question is getting the sun on your skin directly, quickening the ascension process. Yeah. That was one of my questions that I wanted Mm -hmm. to know. Okay. On your skin, accelerating the process of ascension. Making me shuffle it good. (laughs) This one. So got the three of discs. This one's called the work card. Um, It is helping you still, it's still up to you. Like, it's not a free pass. So it's right. not like if I just go out in the sun, I'm yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. No, but it, it is adding to the work that you're already doing. Okay. Um, makes sense. And it is a quickening agent. I don't know how the metaphor to use for that, but it quickens this process by utilizing the sun's energy and knowing that it's increasing your consciousness. So it would be, for example, if you did go out and meditate at sunset, don't put the sunscreen on because you know that that's an inhibitor of consciousness. It's not going to let it expand. So you'd want to do that and let yourself have naked exposure, if you will, to the sunset. Um, And it would assist you and aid in the process, but it is not the main um, component of ascension, the main component of ascension is your choices, right? How you're polarizing. So yeah, that makes, we sense. don't get the work done for us. We still no. have to work, on it. which no surprise really. Right. We right. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> no freebies. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was really insightful today. Got some good guidance as usual from the cards. If any of you have topics or ideas that you want to see, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments. And of course, if you're with us live, feel free to leave and interact with us in the chat. We're always happy to take on your topics and recommendations and explore, do a little investigating. Um, yeah. But this has been awesome, Tree. So where can everyone find you if they want to further connect? Absolutely. So you can check out the links below or you can go to blithestarlight.com. That's my website where you can see all the things that I do. Uh, And of course, you can follow me here on YouTube at the Blythe Starlight channel, where you can get more messages uh, from my team and spirit. They often give us updates about what's going on or the areas that are getting highlighted at the current moment. And I do some deep digging on other topics um, and you can check that out there. And Amber, how about you? How can they connect with you? Yeah. So if you want to detox from all these chemicals, from all the sunscreen and the lotions, et cetera, and balance your hormones and lower that inflammation, et cetera, you can check out the links below and you can reach out if you want to explore support, listen to the No Sugar Coding podcast and so much more at amberapproved.ca. So This has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us again. And we will see you again next week for a whole new topic. Take care. Bye.